games, the good side and the downside. Let's talk about the players. And so who would you believe to be the best player in the history of the program? This is such a hard question to answer. And you can certainly so take many... it to a top two or three list if you'd like. Yeah, I, I feel like there's a there's definitely a, a Mount Rushmore quality to it. Um, there, UCF had a lot of good players in those Division II, Division I, AA era teams, but... Um, you know, Sean Jefferson was probably the first, if you're an NFL fan, Sean Jefferson is the first UCF player you really think of. He played in the Super Bowl with the San Diego Chargers, but, but the leader in the clubhouse is Dante Culpepper played all four years at UCF, helped put UCF on the map, actually came to UCF from Ocala when UCF was a one double a team, uh, was a Heisman candidate, his final year, actually his final two years at UCF. And he was air McNair after air McNair. Um, nearly got UCF to a bowl game, uh, obviously was drafted in the first round by the Minnesota Vikings and people forget how good of a pro Dante Culpepper was until he blew out his knee. Um, Dante was, um, one of the most, like uh, you mentioned it earlier, one of the most unique athletes I think ever to play, um, at that level. There's, a, a, I, have, I have stories from friends of mine who actually went to school with him here at UCF. And, uh, and they said that, you know, they, uh, one friend of mine told me they took a team, a funny story about Dante. They, they said that we took a team sports class with him and, uh, cause he was a, he was an education major and it was a physical education course. And they said, well, we're going to play a different sport every day. So one day it was golf. The next it was soccer. The next it was lacrosse. The next it was shuffleboard. And, and my, my buddy at the time said he blew away everybody at every sport golf. He could drive a ball 300 yards plus soccer. He was like Pele out there. They said that there's literally no sport Dante Culpepper's not good at. Um, and so he was the first one who, um, who, when you thought, when you think UCF, you think Dante Culpepper, um, the second player and very close to him, uh, would be, uh, Brandon Marshall. Now, Brandon has had, uh, uh, he's, he's a, to me, he's a no doubter hall of famer. Um, still holds a couple of NFL records. His longevity in the NFL is, um, is unquestionable. One of the most talented wide receivers to ever play the game. Believe it or not, at UCF, he, didn't, he wasn't the Brandon Marshall that we all know now when he was at UCF. He was a pretty good receiver with some amazing size. Another local kid from Lake Cal High School, which is, in, which is near uh, the Winter Park Castleberry area, just a few miles from campus. Um, Came to UCF where he was a he was a quarterback there. Came to UCF as a wide receiver. It was pretty good, actually. His first year at UCF playing was nineteen was excuse me was two thousand four, and uh, that was George O'Leary's first year. UCF went zero and eleven, and they had a spate of injuries in the secondary, and UCF ran out of defensive backs that year. So they actually asked Brandon Marshall, yes, that Brandon Marshall, to play defensive back. And also Mike Walker, now Mike Sims Walker, who also was a wide receiver in the NFL. They were UCF's two starting corners for several games that year. And Brandon Marshall ended up leading UCF in tackles his first year. Okay. Fast forward to 2005. He has that massive game against Nevada in the Hawaii Bowl, made himself a lot of money that in that day uh, because he was absolutely unstoppable. Um, and uh, makes his way to the Denver Broncos, you know, goes to the Chicago Bears. He's excellent there, Miami Dolphins, et cetera, et cetera, um, and, and was just recently elected into the UCF Athletics Hall of Fame and well-deserved, um, and, and not just for the work that he did on the field, but also uh, his work advocating for mental health off the field, I think is something that I know a lot of UCF uh, people and people associated with UCF football are very proud of. Um, and Brandon's a, Brandon's an excellent dude, and he came back to campus just recently for that, and it was a lot of fun. Number three on Mount Rushmore, I put Kevin Smith, South Florida kid, came to George O'Leary, um, elected to go to uh, UCF over a couple of other Florida schools, had some offers from Miami, but uh, he knew he could play right away and had a couple good thousand-yard seasons, and then in 2007, he goes nuts. Um 2,500 plus yards. He actually challenged Barry Sanders's record uh, for single season yards. Um, just every time UCF, it, it, it was just give the ball to Kevin and watch him run. Uh, he played behind one of the greatest offensive lines, probably actually I would say the greatest offensive line UCF has ever had. 
um, and uh, and led UCF to its first conference uh, title in 2007 when they defeated Tulsa. That was the first year, by the way, of the on-campus stadium, Spectrum Stadium, then known as Bright House Network Stadium, which was a a, a big a, a big mile marker for UCF in terms of a program because before they played their games at the Citrus Bowl, which is downtown, um, about 10, 12 miles from campus, not the easiest place to get to and certainly park your car. And the building of that on-campus stadium for UCF really changed the ball game. And, and for the first season to have Kevin Smith have that year was huge. Obviously, he went to the NFL, played in Detroit, and now he's a running backs coach uh, at Florida Atlantic. Um, under Lane Kiffin after actually spending some time as a grad assistant at UCF. So um, Kevin Smith's number three. And at number four, I kind of have like a, a four and a 4A. And going back to 2017, it would be Mackenzie Milton, who's still recovering from that devastating leg injury he suffered last year, uh, and Shaquem Griffin. Um, when you think about everything that he overcame uh, with the amniotic band syndrome, uh, having one hand amputated and doing what he did as a football player, uh, being one of the great football players, not only in UCF history, but one of the great defenders in the country playing in the NFL now is, uh, is remarkable. And he is beloved here at UCF as is McKenzie. They're both great kids. Um, and everyone's, and, and the, the best part is even though Shaquem is in the NFL now, um, None of us here in Orlando believe that the book is closed on Mackenzie Milton just yet. Uh, if anyone can come back from that devastating injury that he suffered in the South Florida game this year, he can. So uh, the book the book is not done being written on him just yet. Let's hope so. He certainly seems like an outstanding young man from everything that I can gather in, in what I've read and uh, witnessed in person and also in, in my uh, two American Conference Media Days uh, covering those and then also the interviews that I've seen elsewhere online with Mackenzie Milton and what a dynamic player to watch out there lead a team from a leadership standpoint, from a playmaking standpoint, from a passing standpoint. Mackenzie Milton. I'm running down Dante Culpepper's numbers and uh, reminding myself of his greatness as he burst onto the league. And it, it just, uh, it appeared as though after having his breakout season, which was his first starting season in 2000 for the Minnesota Vikings and leading them to the NFC championship game, a, a season in which he led the NFL in touchdown passes is that the sky was the limit. Well, he had five extremely productive seasons, including a season where he threw for 4,700 yards, which is certainly an impressive mark today, but it was much more impressive in that day. It was like throwing for 6,000 yards today yeah. and um, was among the league leaders in all statistical categories uh, uh, for his first five seasons generally during that time, but had the one big season with Minnesota led them again to the brink of the Super Bowl. Uh, they were blown out by the New York Giants, but uh, never recaptured from a winning standpoint that magic. And then the um, the uh, career deteriorated from there. Got Jeff uh, Sharon on the line from Black and Gold Banneret, the SB Nation platform for UCF. Uh, we've discussed the greatest players in program history. Jeff, now we ask you to uh, run down the worst players. And no, we're not going to. <laughs> 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 yes, we're, we're, we're skip that category. We don't want um, death. Me, and, me. And I'm the worst player in UCF football history. I had no career games played. I never even bothered trying out. <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> so maybe technically, while standing on the sideline, your your shoe crossed the white line. So we were technically on the field during a play. Yeah, and... I had I had a camera. You know, I may I didn't realize where I was. I got a little bit too close. You know, I got yelled at by one of the event staff. It's okay. All right. Certainly not the worst guest that we have here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Far from it. Jeff Sharon uh, joining us from Black and Gold Banneret. All right. We'll go to favorite players of all time. So sometimes there's a bit of a crossover for obvious reasons. People gravitate to the best players typically as their favorite players. But not always, because sometimes there's a guy that just has a certain swag, a certain feel, maybe has a uh, feel-good story background that uh, fans uh, gravitate to a particular player who's not necessarily the best. So who are some of your favorites now through the years? Well, we've had, uh, we've had quite, a, 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 quite a few of them that, were, that really were fan favorites. I think uh, uh, one of them, 
I, I talk about how great Shaquem Griffin was and how beloved he was, um, and his uh, his resume at UCF um, speaks for itself. Um, when I think of favorite players, I, th I I like to think of guys who like really overcame a lot of adversity um, and were just really cool dudes about it. Um, another guy I think uh, I think a lot of UCF players kind of uh, think of, believe it or not, was Jeff Godfrey. Uh, when he came in as a freshman, he led UCF to their first bowl win over Georgia in the Liberty Bowl, um, and then uh, and then lost his starting job to uh, eventually number three overall the draft pick Blake Bortles. Um, and then Godfrey, there was a there, you know he was obviously pretty disappointed with that, but uh, after a, but after a rough transition period where Bortles kind of took the job from him, Godfrey decided it, it, you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna transfer over to wide receiver. And caught that touchdown against Louisville in that critical game up uh, um, up in uh, up in Papa John Stadium. Uh, it was a quarterback to a quarterback, uh, Bortles to Bortles to Godfrey, and uh, and for a guy who was a real team player um, uh, to to come up big in that situation um, is really it, it really speaks to the kind of player that uh, that he is. Uh, other favorites, you know, Mike Walker was a uh, was an outstanding player at uh, Edgewater High School in Orlando, who came to UCF and teamed with Brandon Marshall. Um, went to the NFL himself, was an outstanding receiver. Uh, we mentioned Kevin Smith. Um, if you want to go back even a little further, there was a there was a uh, a, a football player named Dwight Collins at UCF who was a, a running back, um, who was uh, an outstanding student. Dwight Collins was legally deaf and uh, and played on UCF's team and uh, and was an outstanding player um, as well in his own right. Um, he was uh, as a uh, sorry if there's a if you could put an edit there because uh, he was from oh sorry he was from Lake Charles Louisiana um, and was uh, and came to UCF and was more than an interesting story really contributed to a lot of those teams in that in that era that you were talking about where there was the heavy scheduling in the uh, late nineties to the early two thousands, he was an excellent player. And then my personal favorite um, is uh, Alex Haynes, four year player for UCF. He was the captain his final couple of years, um, finished as UCF's all time uh, leading rusher and, uh, and kind of saw it all from UCF as an independent through the Mac years um, it's, it, it's sad that actually his last year as a senior was that, oh, was that 0 and 11 2004 season, because I know this sounds cliche, but nobody ran the ball harder than Alex Haynes. If a, if a bowling ball sprouted arms and legs and a head, it was Alex. Um, he had a, a brief time in the NFL, um, uh, with the Carolina Panthers and a couple of other teams, but. Um, you know, finished as the all-time leading rusher until Kevin Smith took that title from him. But um, Al if I personally had to uh, had to put a guy in there, it'd be Alex Haynes, who's my personal favorite UCF player of all time.